Hi, my name is Mike. I'm making this video to show some of the features of the Cruise America standard size RV rental, which is a five passenger, 25 foot RV rental vehicle available from Cruise America and Cruise Canada. I'm making this video because my wife and I have rented the vehicles three times and we really enjoy them. And I noticed there wasn't a whole lot of information available about them on the internet uh, besides the Cruise America website. And there was some questions that I had that I was never able to find an answer to looking online. So, you know, we just kind of learned as we went, uh, you know, renting the vehicle multiple times and learning about its features. And so just wanted to show those off and hopefully this video will some help someone else who's considering renting one of this type of RV. I'm just going to walk around it from the outside first on the, we'll start on this side since we're over here. So on the driver's side, we're actually looking at it from the back. You'll see there's backup sensors in the rear bumper that'll beep if you get too close to something from the back. It has a trailer hitch, but they usually charge you a little bit extra to use that um, just because of the additional wear and tear on the vehicle. Uh, on the, also on the driver's side, you have your gas fill up. It uses regular unleaded 87 fuel. You have your sewer dump valves. So mine are both pulled out right now. There's the gray on the left, the black on the right. There's a sewer hose stored underneath here. And you'll see I have mine open because I'm getting ready to take this back today. They want you to bring it back with all of the tanks empty. Otherwise, they'll charge you a little bit more. Um, you can see everything is neatly contained in that little compartment. And then it just turns to lock. Also on the driver's side, we have the exhaust for the fridge, the exhaust for the furnace. If you use that, we've actually never used that. Um, I think it makes it pretty warm inside, but we've always stayed somewhere where it's already pretty warm. You have your shoreline connector, where this is where you would connect to a uh, 30 amp external circuit. You would just unplug it from here and connect it to the shoreline on the pedestal if you're at a campsite that has full hookups. There's also a 30 amp to a standard household size receptacle 20 amp outlet stored in there. And any RV you rent should already have all of this equipment. If it doesn't, talk to your Cruise America sales rep to make sure that you have everything. They'll typically walk you through and you know verify as well before you leave the yard. So you've got a compartment for your auxiliary battery, which you can unlock with the with the key if you need it. Your generator. And this is turned on from inside. You need the generator if you're not connected to shore power, if you want to use the air conditioning or the microwave or the internal, uh, the standard power outlets, the household style 120 volt power outlets. Um, you can remove the cover. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm using one hand to hold the camera, but you can remove the cover and there's a little oil dipstick check behind there. They say they want you to check the oil and add some every three hours of use. And there's a counter inside as well on the control panel, I'll show you. Um, exhaust for the generator. So, walking around the cab, you'll see from the front, it's just a standard Ford E350 cargo van front end. And so you can use any standard Ford Super Duty E350 wiper blades or engine oil or anything like that. This latch here is to secure your main, your driver, your passenger crew door, I don't know what the good term for that is, so it can stay open when you're at your campsite. Under here is your propane fill. Now we've never done this, we're getting ready to do this for the first time today, wish us luck. It's got a gauge, a fill nozzle, an on-off valve that you're supposed to turn off every time you stop and get gasoline. Also along the passenger side you've got the exhaust for the hot water heater so this is your your furnace for your hot water for the stove uh, or for the I'm sorry for the uh, sink the sinks and for the hot water for your showers up here is a regular water fill for regular tap water you can just open that stick a hose in it and fill it up last thing here along the side is a very large lockable external storage space power outlets those only work if you're plugged in or if you're um, on shore power there's a light switch with a couple cargo lights you've got a hose a table 
And there's a spare tire under there. There's no jack for the spare tire. They want you to call roadside assistance if you need a tire changed. It's too dangerous to try to jack this up yourself, is what they say. There's another access hole for this cargo area in the back. We're going to turn it off. Close this up. I'll come around and lock it in a minute. So, stepping inside the vehicle, you'll see there's actually two doors. And I'm hoping I'm showing this okay on the camera. It's kind of sunny out here. You can actually separate this. So the main door of the vehicle, you can latch open when you're at your campsite. And then you can use just your screen door. And one thing I really like about this screen door is that it has this slide open close area. So you can just pass stuff through easily. Like if you're outside, if one, one person's outside preparing dinner, the other person's inside preparing something, you don't have to open the door a million times. You just slide this open, pass it through. Keeps bugs from getting in the cab a little bit. Stepping up, there's two steps. A fire extinguisher. This is the stove. This is a new, actually a new style stove. Uh, this is a 2017 model year. The previous Cruise Americas that we've rented have been older vehicles. They had an older stove that had a lot of rattling components on it. This one rattles a lot less. Um, it's a little bit smaller. We've actually never used it. I mean, you're camping. You're going to be cooking outside for the most part. It's, it seems kind of funny to use a stove. Um, but I'm sure there's people who do. Um, so up here is the main control panel. There's a level test button, and you can see our fresh water is full, LP gas is two-third, battery condition is good. It's sunny outside, so it's solar charging. I don't actually know how much solar power this thing generates. I'd imagine it's a pretty small, cheap solar panel, like 20 watts. I don't know. It might be 100, but I can't imagine. I've never crawled on the roof, but I can't imagine it's much of a very good uh, solar charging system, but it works. Um, you've got a water heater. Turn this on. You'll hear it starting outside. This heats up your water for your showers and for your hot water for your sink. Generator on off switch. Sometimes you have to hold this down and you'll hear it underneath you starting. Water pump, we'll turn that on real quick. This, if you're not connected to an exterior water source, and I forgot to show that, I'll walk around again in a minute to show where you connect the hose if you're connected to a shoreline water. Um, but this provides water pressure if you're not connected to a hose so you can use a sink and shower. Levels test again. So these, there's a ton of outlets around here, the standard household outlets. Uh, they have USB ports. These don't work unless the generator's on or you're connected to shore power. So if you don't have either of those options, one thing that we did was use a power splitter to turn the 12 volt cigarette lighter style outlets into you know, standard USB just so we can charge phones and stuff. Plenty of storage space. There's lights all over the place. I'll turn a couple of them on. They have a, a two-way switch. So you can turn on one side or both sides. These work anytime. Uh, they do draw off the auxiliary battery. Um, we had we recently spent a trip, a couple days off grid. No no problems with anything other than that we wash a lot of dishes and the gray water tank filled up pretty fast. It's only 24 gallons. The gray water tank. Um, fresh water capacity is 40 gallons, so we ran out of waste tank space before we ran out of uh, water. Um, in the cab, you see it's a standard Ford seating configuration. Seats aren't the most comfortable in the world, but it's, you know, your basic Ford cab setup. It does have this really nice center console here with tons of space. We put a lot of drinks in here, phones, phone chargers. I like to use this space down here for all kinds of, like, charging accessories for our phones, tablets, etc. Um, more space, maps, um, you can throw stuff up there. Upstairs area converts into a bed. We've never used it. We don't have kids. I'd, you know, I, ideally when we buy our own RV, I want something that has cabinets up here. Otherwise, this is just wasted space. We kind of set stuff up here once we've set up camp, you know, things that we're taking in and out, you know, camp lanterns and stuff. Extra bottles of propane just so we can get to them quickly. Uh, there's roof vents all along the top. Um, let's open a couple of these cabinets. They're, most of them have magnetic latches, and they're pretty well secured. Uh, they're not. None of them are going to fly open on you when you're driving. There's more over here. There's a handle for if you need to move around the cab. Seat belts, the seats, seat belts, bench seat. This folds down and turns into a bed. Um, if you remove that pole and store it in that opening down there, 
you can turn this into another bed. This would be really cramped with five people in it, not going to lie. It would probably be a pretty miserable experience, but for two, it's fantastic. Um, here's your main sink. On, off. Uh, fridge. And the fridge has got an on and an auto switch here on the top. It's off right now, but if we were to turn it on and set it to auto, you see it automatically selects whether it's going to use propane or electric if you're hooked to shore power to cool off. And it also has a latch so that it doesn't fly open when you're driving. One thing I found with this fridge is this middle middle shelf. Um, you can't really fit like tall things in here like bottles of water very easily, bottles of soda. We, we bring our Brita filter with us, our big Brita filter pitcher. So one thing I do is take these clips here, push this out, slide this white piece here in once this clip is removed you do that on both it allows you to just take this shelf out so that you have more room for tall things furnace down here another drawer there's a little light below that if you turn all the lights on there's lights around the floor it's actually it looks really nice you've got drawers everywhere um, some matches why not uh, like I said some of these are pretty stiff to pull open Another sink, a mirror, medicine cabinet, another light, a coat closet over here with a bar, no hangers, but you can bring your own. Looking back up towards the cab a little bit, microwave up there on the top. Uh, again, that only works if you're connected to shore power, have the generator on. More cabinets. Curtains, all kinds of privacy curtains. Um, bed is not super comfortable, and you can't really, with that corner cut off, you can't really fit standard sheets on here. What worked best for us is just to get a sleeping bag, unzip it, t fold it all, lay it all the way over here, tuck it in around the edges, you know, use the soft side of the sleeping bag up, and then just throw another blanket on top, throw some pillows at the end. I mean, you're camping, you don't need 500 thread count sheets. <laughs> More vents. Here's the bathroom. So a couple comments about the bathroom. The toilet is on a pedestal, and I think that's to accommodate some of the plumbing underneath. But it makes it kind of hard. It's kind of like if you got to, if you have to sit down, if it kind of feels like you're on a perch. Um, flush the toilet is just with this flush lever right here. You push it with your foot. And also the shower. The water gets really hot, which is great. It's got hooks up here. You got some more hooks over here for your clothes. The shelf is really small. You barely fit a travel size bottle of shampoo. You can see this compared to my fingers. Travel size bottle of shampoo and a shaving razor might be all that's going to fit there. And as soon as you turn around, you're going to knock them off. <laughs> There's a vent above you with a fan. You can turn that fan on anytime. I can turn it on now. That's good because you never know if you're in the bathroom, you don't want to inconvenience the other people with odor. Um, this skylight here, this is my other comment about the bathroom. So one, the toilet's on a perch, which is kind of annoying. Door's kind of low, but also this skylight. The shower, when you're standing in there, you'll see that that's also raised. I'm six foot three. When I stand in this shower, the top of my head is inside that skylight. And I don't know if you can tell from this, but it's not centered over top of the shower. It's off center. What would be really great, you know, if somebody from Cruise America happens to hear this, just center the skylight over the shower. It'll give this much more headroom for people that are standing in the shower so they're not hitting their head over here. So, shower kind of cramped. My wife my wife has a hard time in it and she's five foot two, so I really struggle with it a bit, but it's, uh, it's a shower. You can take a shower to camp. Beats uh, roughing it in the woods. So that's basically it. I'm gonna walk around the outside of the vehicle one more time and show you where to connect the uh, outside water hose. If you have any comments or questions about this, feel free to leave them in the YouTube comments. Um, and if it was helpful to you, please like and subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. A um, couple other things under here. There's an AC converter. There's a, I'm gonna shine a flashlight under there so you can see it a little better. Carbon monoxide detector. This has got some fuses in it. If something is not working, you can open that up and check the circuit breakers. A little cubby hole under there for storing shoes. We tried to get our chihuahua to go in there, but he hated it. <laughs> More privacy curtains. Privacy curtains. 
gets pretty dark in here. Um, even if you're sleeping during the daylight, the only thing is, is the skylights tend to let in a pretty fair amount of light. So if you're asleep, you'll know the sun is coming up because of the light coming in through those. Let's just turn off the lights. Microwave again. Yeah, please leave any comments if comments or questions if you have any. Um, like I said, we've rented these several times now, so we're, we're pretty familiar with everything on them. Um, deadbolt and then the other door lock. It's got two locks on the door. Let me just go around one more time. So when you're connected to shoreline power, you would put your sewer hose into the sewer, your, uh, your power into the power pedestal, and right there that's the only other thing I forgot to show you the city water connection where you can just connect a regular screw in hose to get standard water if you use this you don't have to use you don't have to turn on the water pump so that's basically everything and like I said if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments I tend to try to respond every day and I hope this has been helpful thank you